Again. Again. Hamid worked in the police force in Afghanistan. He lives in an area where the Taliban are rife. His father also worked for the police and communications. This was where he was first graduated from the police. There he is again at this person out in his Afghani police uniform. It got to the stage where there was a grenade thrown into their home when they were sleeping and Hamid does have a four-year-old sister at home and the family decided to leave, to flee. The family uh, went ahead and the little sister the mum and the dad got taken by the Taliban at the Pakistan border and were held illegally in prison. And they hadn't, they didn't know if their parents were alive or dead. They heard nothing. So I saw the pictures of Ireland on the Turkish coast. And I went to my mum and dad and I said, I think we should go to Calais and help. I said, they need volunteers. And we went to Calais. And on our first day, we were distributing food parcels that we'd spent weeks making. And at the end of the day, when we were leaving, Hamid came into the camp and we got to know him. And we went back the next weekend, realizing that there isn't, two days wasn't enough. This time we swapped numbers and we stayed in touch. And I had a phone call on the morning of November 26th from Hamid. And he sent me a location to say that he was in Kent. I didn't believe him. And he sent me a selfie outside Swanley train station. And we went and we, um, got to the train station and I shouted Hamid and he ran to us and um, he was exhausted. His feet were black because when he crossed his knees were up to his chin and he was in there for like 15 hours. And he just settled into family life with the children at home. You know, I've got children who are one, four and then five and my children fell upon him. They called him Lala which is Farsi for big brother. <laughs> One of the conditions of him staying with us is that he had to sign into the local police station every second Tuesday. He didn't miss a single sign in. And last Tuesday, the 30th, we went to the police station and I waited. And it takes two seconds. He runs in, they check his picture, he signs and he leaves. And I saw an officer come to him when he was signing and took him into another room. And they said, we are detaining him because uh, he did enter the UK illegally. And I said, well, he had to, you know, he's an asylum seeker. They all enter the UK illegally. And he said, well, that's the only charge we can bring to him because he doesn't have a criminal record. He said, we have had instructions to remove him to Holland. I said, why Holland? And he said, well, when he was on his way to the UK from Afghanistan, he was fingerprinted in Holland. They stopped him and his younger brother, who's 12, and his cousin, who's 14. They stopped them and they asked Hamid to provide fingerprints to prove he wasn't a wanted man, he wasn't a criminal. They checked him, he was fine. They let him go back to the train station and he got the train to France to get to the jungle. And those fingerprints have now come to light. And that was it. Didn't see him. I found out where he was and I went to visit him on Saturday and he was in an actual prison, a prison that was actually closed down because it wasn't good enough for British prisoners. Today they're moving him uh, to Gatwick Detention Centre where he's due to fly tomorrow morning back to Holland. If Holland remove him to Afghanistan, which is possible, I don't want that blood on my hands. I don't want to have to say because of some poor decisions made by someone in a bureaucratic system, we've let you down and I'm really, really sorry, but you're going to die. Really good result. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a temporary result, and it might all change. You know, the, the, the situation has just changed dramatically in the last 36 hours. It has gone from the worst possible case to scenario to him being in bed as I've watched his flight take off from the, you know the other side of the road. So um, it's fantastic news. Thousands and thousands of refugees are removed and deported every week and they don't have a network of people. They just go to a detention centre, they get on a plane and they are removed quite often to their death. The problem is people are still sleeping in the mud on the floor in France in 2016. That's the problem. Why is removing people like Hamid a priority and leaving children in Calais unaccompanied not so important? We've got all the time in the world to leave them there. And it may not be our job as a country, but our job as, hum as humans, you know, for humanity. Why not help these people? For what purpose? 